nobody on that side. <laughs> Just call me Jacob. So this is the first week of many in our series. It's gonna is is called the God of Jacob. The God of Jacob is about the conflict of who we really are and how we would like to appear before the world. The God of Jacob is about the conflict of who we really are and who we think we're supposed to be. The, con the God of Jacob is a series about uh, us, who we are on the inside, who we pretend to be for those around us, and who God sees us to be. So hopefully we learn how to let go of who we think we are who we're and who we think we're supposed to be and embrace who we are. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going to we're going to learn how to find our true identity in Christ, and to do this, it'll it, it's helpful to see ourselves uh, through my boy Jacob, uh, because in the Scripture there, there's no one that in the, that demonstrates this inner conflict of of who they're, they're trying to be and who they really are, who they're presenting themselves to be, and who God sees them to be in such an exciting way as Jacob. Because Jacob is complicated, right? Uh, he's complicated. He's just like you are complicated. And I am complicated. And your wife is complicated. And your husband is complicated. And your mother-in-law is complicated. Right? <laughs> Your sons are complicated, right? <laughs> but we're using Jacob uh, because of this, this inner conflict. And if I just wanted to pick anybody that, that had inner conflict, of course I could have used a number of people in the Bible. You know, I could have I could have started all the way back in the beginning with Noah, who built an ark, right, to preserve uh, uh, all of humanity. Uh, but afterwards, he got drunk and did some pretty weird things, right? Did you see the movie? Right? All right. I could have chose Abraham, who was the, the father of many nations, but yet he was a liar. I could have, I could have chose Moses, who uh, delivered God's people, but yet was a murderer and a fugitive on the run. I could have used David, a man after God's own heart, who uh, slept with a woman who desired a woman so much, and after sleeping with her, sent her husband out to the front lines to be killed in battle yes. that he should have been in. Yes. Right? Yes. That's jacked up. Right? Yes. <laughs> I could have chose uh, Peter, who preached on the day of Pentecost, and 3,000 people got saved in one sermon, but yet denied Christ and said, I don't even know him. Yes. So I, I just bring up a few of these people to show you that if you're complicated, if you have complications in your life, if you feel like, well, people just don't understand who I am, you got great company. <laughs> because the Bible is full of complicated people. And don't ever go to a church where they teach you uh, that God only uses perfect people to fulfill His promise. Because that's not true. God uses imperfect people so His perfection could be made perfect in their, in their weakness. And as we go through Jacob's life, uh, we're going to look, we want to see ourselves in the, eye of, in the eyes of Jacob. We want to place ourselves in his life. And we're not just, we're not just looking at this like a, a, a biography of Jacob's life, uh, because you can read Jacob's life all day long. But if you want to look at it and see ourselves the way God sees us. So you have to put yourself into this story. So in Genesis uh, chapter 32, Starting at verse 22, it, it's all about Jacob and his wrestling, right? He sees this man and, and he starts to wrestle with him uh, because he's left all alone and, and they're, they're, they're wrestling at night and they don't even know who, he, who they are. And it says that Jacob is, he's real tenacious about it. He's stubborn because he won't let the man go. And he's just hanging on and he's like, I, you know, I, I'm not letting you go till you bless me. But during this wrestling match, we, we, we see Jacob, you know, holding on to this man. But this isn't the first time that we see Jacob wrestling. You guys want to see the first time? Yeah. You want me to show it to you? Yes. That's good, because we're going to be here a while, right? 
So the first time we see Jacob wrestling is in Genesis 25, and he's not even born yet. So here's, here's the story. In Genesis 25, 26, uh, 20, 25, 21 through 26, it says, Isaac pleaded with the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was unable to have children. The Lord answered Isaac's prayer, and Rebekah became pregnant. Be careful what you pray for, because you just might get it, right? <laughs> in verse 22, it says, But the two children struggled with each other in the womb. So then you gotta, you got to picture this, right? So Rebecca is going to the hospital, and they put the little the, the, the jelly goo stuff on her stomach, and the, they get the sonogram going, and, and the technician's like, this is, this is weird. So he turns the screen around, and he's like, look, first of all, you're having twins. Right? And second of all, they're already fighting with each other. They're already struggling. They're, you talk about sibling rivalry. I mean, this is it to the max, right? They're not even born yet, and they're already fighting with each other. And I wonder if that isn't, you know, some sort of symbolic gesture for us to see that God often births stuff in us that always comes with a struggle. When God, when God bursts things into this world, there's a struggle with it. And, and it, it's, it's symbolic of this inner conflict that we face when a dream is born, when a destiny is born, when a purpose is born, and there's that inner conflict, that wrestling match that goes on inside of us. So verse 22. So, so, so she went to the Lord. So that's the best thing you can ever do. She went to the Lord. She did not go to her friends. And sometimes you have to take stuff to the Lord in prayer. She didn't go to her friends. You, you stop going to the people that are just going to tell you what you want to hear. Don't go to the people that are just going to fill your fill your ears with the with you know the the, the just you know hey oh it's going to be okay all this stuff. Sometimes you have to go to God, get alone, separate yourself from everybody, and say, God, this is what's going on with me because only God can tell you what He's placed inside you. Only God can tell you what He's going to birth inside of you because He can look into your heart. That's right. Amen. She did the great. You're going to have to help me preach this. I'm yes. telling you, right? <laughs> She went to the Lord and she asked about it. And then she said the, the one thing that, you know, almost every mother on earth ever said, that they always say, at some point, she, she says, why is this happening to me? Amen. Right? Yeah. That's like a great Mother's Day scripture, right? Why is this happening to me? She went from, God, I need a baby, to why is this happening to me, right? She went to the Lord, uh, and the Lord told her, because only God can tell you what's going on inside your life. And he said, the sons in your womb will become two nations, because this is bigger than what you understand. This is much bigger than you can see. This goes beyond you. Two people, the two people in you will become two nations. From the very beginning, the two nations will be rivals. That's why they're wrestling with each other. They're always going to be in conflict. Uh, one nation will be stronger than the other. And your uh, older son will serve your younger son. Verse 24. And when the time came to give birth, Rebecca discovered that she did indeed have twins. Right? It's like God didn't know for some reason. Right? All right, God. We'll see. Right? She found it. Guess what? Surprise. Twins. Uh, 25. The first one was very red and hairy and disgusting looking and stuff and because he's all red and hairy they named him Esau right and uh, and, he, and eventually the, the nation of Edom comes from him and and, uh, and that, that that's that's cool and uh, but then uh, then the so that's the older one so Esau was born first uh, then the older twin was born in the uh, when he was born the, the, the next baby came out just grabbing at the heels of the older baby. So they called him Jacob, which means heel grabber. Okay. <laughs> so picture this. This guy's got this name for the rest of his life. He's known as heel grabber. <laughs> For something that happened before he was even conscious, before he even had a conscious thought, before he understood what was going on, wrestling with Esau in the womb, coming out, grasping at the heel, 
forever throughout his entire life is now known as heel grabbery. <laughs> way, to, way to start off your life, right? The heel grabber. <laughs> and why is he trying to do that? Because he's trying to get ahead. He's trying to get ahead of Esau. Because in this cult, you have to understand when the firstborn, when, when you have the firstborn <coughs> son, things, things start to change, right? Because the firstborn gets the inheritance and the blessing. And, it, and when they get the inheritance, it's not split. So Jacob and Esau are twins, right? Both brothers. So they don't get an even split on the inheritance. Esau gets a, a sizable amount more than Jacob. It's not 50-50. It's not and I know some people are like, well, my parents are just leaving me dead, right? Isaac is loaded. Right? So, rich dad got to split. So, Jacob is trying to get ahead because if he can just be born five seconds before Esau, he will get more than Esau. Right? He's trying to get ahead. He's trying to, he's trying to be the firstborn. Uh, and, that, and, that's the, and that's the thing. Is we're all, and if you don't believe in original sin, but we're born with sin, all that tells me is that you don't have kids. That's it. If you don't believe in the devil, that just tells me your kids ain't in middle school. <laughs> because we're born into this me first mentality. And when kids are born, all it's about is me, 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 mine, mine, mine. You don't have to teach a kid to say, mine, no, me, right? They know that stuff. So you have to tell them, you have to teach them to say please and thank you and, and here, let me share. You have to teach them those things. But they're born with this me first mentality. And that's part of who we are. And Jacob finds himself in this me first mentality, trying to get ahead, grasping at the heels of his hairy brother Esau, right? Trying to get ahead. So, and this is a, the, the whole me first thing, it, it, you know, I know that's not, that doesn't happen in our house. Our house is full of love, <laughs> joy, acceptance. Peace, right? But when I start to come home from from work and I, you know, I pull up in the in the driveway and and the, and the kids, you know, they they they're like, oh, our right, dad's coming home and and uh, and they they you know they they both come running to the door because they want to give dad a hug and, and welcome him home, right? And uh, now I know some of you are like, oh, that's right. I know Sandy does. <laughs> Aww. But that's not. A, <laughs> but they're not. They're not. They're not fighting to show their love for their, you know, amazing father. <laughs> they're trying to see who can get to dad first. That's exactly right. And the hugs aren't just like oh, they're violent hugs. <laughs> I mean, you have to wear a padding. That's just. I mean. You have, to get, you have to prepare yourself to get a hug in our house, right? Because they're trying to, they're, they're coming in because this is me first. They're trying to squeeze the life out of you. And, and, and they're, they're both come running to the door. And, and, and one's like, I will throw my brother across the room by his throat just to get to my dad first, right? Because it's me first. It's this me first mentality. <laughs> and the problem is, Jacob is how can you seek first the kingdom of God if it's, you live in a me-first world? No. Is it possible? Can you seek first the kingdom of God when you're born into me-first mentality? No. no. So Jesus, Jesus said it this way. Uh, he said, uh, many who, who are first will be last, and who are last will be first. Come on, Jesus. What nonsense are you talking about? What world are you from? Heaven. Right? So he's coming down and he's, and he's telling us how it works in heaven. Many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. It's like, well, come on, man. Don't you know how the world works? Didn't you see Talladega Nights? You know, when, when the, the Bobby's dad's peeling off in the car, what does he say? You guys remember? If you're not first, you're last, right? And that's that's how that's how we're raised, and that's how we're brought up. If you're not first, you're last. That's how the structure works, Jesus. You don't know what you're talking about. The guy's like, this is how it works in heaven. Those who are first will be last. Yes. Those who are last will be first. 
Jacob, how can you seek first the kingdom of God, grasping at the heels of your brother Esau? Those who are first will be last. Those who are last will be first. And Jesus, if you spend your life grabbing at heels with this, this, this me first mentality, and you, and you live your life when, where you have to have people like stroking your ego all the time and, and, and you know, always have to build you up and, and, and it's always this me first, me first, me first. And, and you have to, it is, not only is it hard, but it's miserable. Amen. Me first yeah. is miserable. Yeah. Because you find yourself going through life, you can never have any friends because it's always me first, me first, me first. And you can't build relationships so they don't hang around very long because it's all about you. And you start getting offended in church because, you know, whatever, someone did this and it's all about me, 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 me first, me first. Now, I don't like the worship because it's all about me. It's not about God. It's about what I like and what I prefer. It's not me first, me. How can you seek first the kingdom of God if you live in a me first world? That's right. Me first, Jacob. And I hope the connection has been made. When I say Jacob, I'm talking about us. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Me first is miserable. Luke, Jesus says, and uh, Luke he takes it even farther. Luke chapter 9, verse 25. He says, What good is it for someone to gain the whole world or lose or forfeit? Themselves. That's right. What good is it, Jacob, to gain the entire world, to come out grasping at the heels of your brother, only to lose yourself? What good is it? This is for when you know the ladies start dressing a certain way because they want certain people to like them and they like the attention and and, and you know they, they so they put on this face and they start wearing these clothes. What good is it to dress a certain way, to get people to like you? What kind of love is that? Only to lose yourself. Right. What good is it? This is for the guys when they start, you know, they, they get into school and they're born with this, uh, this, this tender heart and this love for people and this compassion for humanity. But when they get into school and they, and they have to start acting hard and they start, start learn, walking a certain way and looking a certain way because if anybody starts seeing them for who they really are, they'll see right through them and they can't have that so they have to learn to squint their eyes and, and get all tough and, you know, and don't let things bother them and start covering up the, the, their compassion and their love for the world. And then because if anybody saw that, what would they think of them? What good is it? To gain the world, but to lose yourself. Amen. What good is it? Amen. <laughs> what good is it, Jacob, if you grab after stuff only to lose yourself? What good is it if you grab after status? What good is it if you grab after success? What good is it if you grab after security only to find that the farther ahead you thought you were getting, the further behind you really are? What good is it to gain the whole world, yet forfeit or lose yourself? <laughs> me and me first doesn't even work, right? It doesn't work. Not only can you not seek the kingdom of God, but what good is it? You've lost everything trying to be me first. It doesn't work. <laughs> because Jacob was still born second. No matter how much he tried to struggle and fight and get ahead, he was still born second. This is all the opening. We'll get to the good stuff in a second. <laughs> so uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna overview this week. We're just gonna overview Jacob's life real quick, and then we're gonna start getting into more specific as the week goes on. Uh, so we just have to hang in there for this week, and it'll it'll be awesome. Uh, so we're just gonna go all over. Uh, you know, we're you know, I mean, we've already gone all over Jacob's life. You know, we've done it towards the end of his life and we've gone back to the beginning of his life where he's a little Jakey Poo, right? <laughs> Jake the Snake. Oh, right. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Sorry. Little little Jake. He comes out grasping at the heels of his brother uh, Esau. And not only does Jacob's name mean heel grabber, but it means deceiver or supplanter. Yes. So Jacob 
is a con man, right? He, he's, he's all about trying to get ahead, and, and he knows how to play the cards and, and do the things. But Esau, and you got to remember, so Esau is his older brother who's, you know, red and hairy. And, but Esau is like the man's man, right? He can go out, kill an elk, skin it right there on the tree, use that knife to gut a bear, and, you know, he can run child lines and, and, and do all those things. He's like Rambo, but red and hairy, right? He's a man's man. And, uh, and uh, so... And Esau, he could hunt, and he could go out and kill game. But the Bible says that Jacob liked to stay among the tents. So Jacob is uh, translated a mama's boy, right? He stays among the tents. He hangs out with his mom all the time, and, and he does like all oh, he's learning how to cook and use a frying pan and all this stuff. And, and, and Esau's out, you know, killing dinner, and and, uh, <laughs> and Esau's, he, I mean, he's just a man's man. And at one point, uh, Esau. Uh, ends up selling his birthright to Jacob, and we'll get into this next week. But Esau ends up selling his birthright to Jacob for a bowl of beans, and uh, you know I don't want to get in too much into it because we'll be here uh, next week. But uh, uh, and anyway, so next week, the the point for next week is sometimes we give up what we want now for what we want, uh, what we want most for what we want now. And, uh, and it'll, you know, it'll be good, so you want to come here and enjoy that one. Mm -hmm. So Jacob, or Esau, sells his birthright to Jacob. And, uh, and now we're going to see Jacob, because there's, you have the birthright and the blessing. Out of the two, the, the, the birthright and the blessing, the blessing is the most important. The money is okay, because everybody wants that. But the blessing is like uh, the conveying authority upon saying, you're going to run this household now. The blessing, you know, you're in charge, right? Right. So we now we find he, uh, Jacob uh, later on in his life. Now he's he, he's like I've already got the I've already got the the the, the inheritance. Now I need now I'm just going to get the blessing and try and get ahead of my brother Esau, right? And uh, so he, he he starts planning on getting this blessing. And when you're in a when you start centering on yourself in life. It's never enough when you're living in this me first world and you start to focus on yourself and you start to, you know, it, it's all about me. It's never enough. And C.S. Lewis put it this way, as we don't take pride in the possession itself, but having more of it than someone else. This is where the herb comes in, yeah. right? Because it's not enough that I'm thin. I have to be thinner than her. Oh, God. It's not enough that I'm ripped. I have to be ripped -er than him. It's not enough that I'm rich. I have to be rich -er. This, this I'm telling you, you're going to have to tell me preach because the, the Holy Ghost is going to break loose this, any second. This is good stuff. It's not enough that I'm strong. I have to be strong -er than that person. It's not enough that my kids are smart. They have to be smart -er than those kids. No matter I can't afford to send them to that school, they have to be smart Er, it's all about the er, the er, and it's, it's funny because Jacob's granddaddy was born in the land of Ur, and I wonder if we don't still live our lives in the land of Ur, trying to get the er, get better, er, get farther, try to do more er than the next person. And the problem with the er, living in er, there's always er, er right? And that's true enough. <laughs> Because no matter how er you get, there's always someone that is er er, right? There's always going to be someone that's better than you, right? And you're always going to find yourself trying to trying to trying to get to that er er. But now Jacob has the birthright, and he wants the blessing. And so, <laughs> how many of you how many of you have heard this story before, right? Where Jacob's going for his birthright. So Isaac is like half blind and he, you know he can't see and he, and he's, he knows his time's coming up. And he's like, all right, Esau, you know I'm going to give you my blessing, and uh, but first you need to go out and you need to kill me a buck uh, because Isaac liked to eat the wild game and so he said to Isaac, when you come back and we will cook it, I'll eat and I'll give you my blessing and and uh, and so. Uh, 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 Esau takes off to go do that. Well, all this is going on. Rebecca's in the back room, you know, in the kitchen with little Jakey Boo. <laughs> you know, they're cooking up dinner, and, and and she hears this, and and she's she's like, oh, 
All right, now now is now's the time for Jacob to get ahead. And so she she you know she comes up with the plan and 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 Jacob's like he's not quite sure about it at first, but he goes along with it anyway. And, and I used to feel sorry for Jacob because when you read the story, it's really Rebecca's idea, and he just goes along with it. But what I didn't know is at this point Jacob is 76 years old. Oh. <laughs> it's a little time, a little late to be blaming it on Mama, right? Because your diapers are a little tight. <laughs> 76, right? Maybe it's time to stand up and be a man and take your own decision and make your own life, right? So he's 76 years old. So you know, I you know, I don't feel sorry for him anymore, right? <laughs> so we'll pick up the story. Genesis 27, verse 15 says, Then Rebekah took the best clothes of Esau, her oldest son, which she still had in the house. Why does she still have this 76-year-old man's clothes in her house? You know, I don't understand everything in the Bible. <laughs> and put them on her younger son, Jacob. She also covered his hands and the smooth parts of his neck. Because you've got to remember, Jacob is smooth. He's a swindler. He's a hustler. He knows how to shoot the craps and take your money, right? Uh, she covered the smooth parts of them with goat skin. Verse 17. Then she uh, handed her son Jacob the tasty food and bread she had made. He went into his father and said, My father, yes, my son, he answered. Who is it? Jacob uh, said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you told me. Please sit up and eat some of the game so that you may give me your blessing. So Jacob, he, he's got the script. He presents it to, to Isaac. And Isaac asked his son, How did you find it so quickly, my son? The Lord your... This is this funny, right? Jacob gives God the credit for his life. Oh, dear. Yeah. Just because something sounds spiritual doesn't mean that it is spiritual. <laughs> the Lord, your God, gave me success, he replied. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Come near so I can touch you, my son. I don't know uh, whether you are really my son or my son Esau or not. He's like, You sound like... You sound like Jacob, but I don't know. Uh, you, you, you've given me the script. And don't you know, you can get so good at fooling people that those closest to you can't even see who you really are. So Jacob goes over to, to his father Isaac and he touched him and said, uh, 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 where are we are? Verse 20 something. 22. He went over to his father Isaac who touched him and said, the voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hands and the and the hands and the head of Esau. He did not recognize him, for his hands were hairy like those of his brother Esau. So he pronounced the blessing on him. So Jacob conned his way to not only getting the birthright, but also the blessing that belonged to Esau. Mm -hmm. And what, what what they didn't plan on. But Rebecca and, and Jacob didn't, didn't realize what was going to happen because about this time, Esau came home. Now Esau, remember, he's Harry Rambo, right? He's the man's man. He knows how to, he's, he's just been out hunting. So Esau comes home with weapons. Paper, rock, scissors. Jacob is good with the frying pan, but rock beats scissors all the time. Gun beats frying pan. Jacob comes home, or Esau comes home, and he sees that Jacob has got the blessings, and he's like, I'm going to kill him. I'll kill him. He took what was mine. And Rebecca's like, Jacob, you better run, boy. Because Esau's going to kill him. So Jacob, Jacob takes off running, and don't you know, you can get what you want and not enjoy what you got because of the way you got it. Jacob got the blessing, which he wanted. But what good is the blessing of Isaac if you can't even stay in the house of Isaac? He went on the run for 21 years. He's hiding out from his brother. He's got everything that he ever wanted. He went out, he went grasping for heels. He got ahead, he's getting further and further ahead. What good is it to gain the world, yet lose yourself on the run? His blessing does him no good hiding his birthright does him no good running away. For 21 years, he's on the run because he got everything that he wanted. What good is it? 
How can you seek first the kingdom of God when it's a me first mentality? It's possible to get what you want and not what you, and not want what you got if you got it the wrong way. So here's the heart of the series. So, uh, and I want you to hear this because this is going to be the, the next few weeks when we're in the life of Jacob. This is what it's about. And I don't just want you to hear it with your heads, but I want you to hear it with your hearts and let the let God work in you because God cannot bless who you pretend to be. <coughs> God cannot bless who you pretend to be. God cannot bless Jacob dressed as Esau. Yeah. God cannot bless you when you're wearing your mask. Mm -hmm. God cannot bless your selfie. <laughs> you know there's over one million selfies taken each day of people? That's a lot of us, right? And the thing with selfies is it's all edited, and we start taking these pictures of how we want people to see us, right? So we, it's never just one. You have to take, like, at least 15 to get it right, and you have to have the, because girls are like, you know, it has, to be, it has to be done a certain way, and you start taking these pictures, and, you, and it, it, if it doesn't turn out right, you got to keep doing it, keep doing it. Why? And you start putting the filters over the picture, and you try to make yourself into something that you're not. God cannot bless your selfie. So if you're uh, uh, if you're looking for like a cool title for this series, it's going to be Death to Selfie. Right? Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> but God cannot God cannot bless who you pretend to be. God can't bless Jacob dressed as Esau. There's many me's, and I don't know if this applies to you, but it applies to me. Because there are many me's that I have in my life. There's me as I am. There's me as I want to be. Because, there, you know, and this, this me that I want to be is the, the, this future Jeremy. So I have this fake Jeremy that I, that I put on in the meantime. But then there's me who I really am. Because the future me, if you could see the, the future me of who I see myself, this guy's awesome, right? He's, I mean, he's ripped. He's got an eight pack. He can have dessert at Dairy Queen. And, and like he's getting invited to the to the state prayer, uh, uh, you know, thing to lead the prayer for the nation. And, and he's just, you know, f successful. And, and, and he's rigid, but at the same time, he's kind. And, and he's funny, but he can also present the word of God in such a way that it impacts people's lives. And, and this guy, I mean, you would vote for him, right? He's just awesome. <laughs> but then there's, then there's me as I am. And the me that I am is not the me who I want to be. So the me that I show you is the fake me. And that's how we start going through life. And we start living these things. We start putting on the mask. And the, and the future Jeremy is who I want to be. But the Jeremy who I am is who I am. And the fake Jeremy is who I, who I pretend to be in the meantime until I get to be the future me. Right? Is that, is that anybody's life? Is that how, that's how we go through life, right? We put on all these masks. We start putting on the clothes of, of Esau. We start, we, we start dressing ourselves up. And we say, you know, I don't like who I am, so I'm going to put on Esau's clothes. I'm going to look like Esau. Because that plan was elaborate, right? I mean, they had the goat skin. They, the, you know, Rebecca's been thinking about this, right? I mean, she's like, well, let's put the skin on. And you start getting some of the hair. We're going to put it on the back of your neck and on your hands. And, you know, that entire process. And we live our lives that way, putting on the mask, putting on the clothes, putting on the hair, pretending to be someone who we're not, expecting God to bless us for who we aren't. Right? Yep, that's so true. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. That is awesome. Amen. Amen. Time to sink in. What good is it to gain the whole world just to lose yourself? Because you may fool Isaac. But you can't fool yourself. You may fool your neighbors, but you can't fool God. You can put on the mask and come to church and, and do all these things, but God sees beyond the mask. He knows who we really are. He says, I know who you are. You're pretending to be this person. You're not that person. The blessings that I have for that person are not for you. No matter how much you want them, even if you get them, you're not going to want them anyway. Because they're not for you. They're for someone else. And Esau, or Jacob, finds himself on the run trying to get blessed as Esau. Because he's wearing Esau's clothes. But now we're going to find 
Jacob, he's, been, he's got the birthright, he's got the blessing of Esau, but now we pick up the story where it's time for Jacob to get his blessing for who he is, yes. not for who Esau is. That's right. God can only bless you when you stop pretending to be someone else. God cannot bless your avatar. He cannot bless who you pretend to be. He can only bless you for who you are. <laughs> and it takes Jacob many years to realize this. At 21 to be exact, right? Uh, before he realized that he can't be blessed and, and uh, uh, you know, he's lived, a, he's lived a pretty good life, right? He's, he's on the run, so he went to work for his uncle and and uh, you know he, he's made some money and he's got a couple wives and and uh, okay, well that's another series. <laughs> he's got married. He has some kids and and and, and sometimes you get all the stuff you want to see that it's it, it's not what you really needed because now he has everything that he's ever wanted in life. He's grabbed after heels his whole life. He's become the con man. He's become the heel grabber. He's the he's the he, he, he's he's stubborn, right? And. Uh, uh, and he, he finally gets everything. He's got the family. He's got the money. He's got the job. He's got it. just to find out that that's not what he needs at all. So and he come and after 21 years, he's like, "This is ridiculous. Maybe if I go back to Esau now, he won't kill me. Maybe there can be reconciliation. Maybe he can forgive me for what I've done." And he starts making this trip. And don't you? Know, <laughs> sometimes. You have to reconcile with yourself before you can reconcile with other people. Amen. 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 Esau, or Jacob, had to come to this place where he found himself before he went to Esau. Mm -hmm. So he, he starts making the, he's making the trip back home, and, and on his way home, he starts wrestling with a man, and, and most, it doesn't, the Bible doesn't say it's God, but uh, it's highly implied. <laughs> Uh, most scholars believe that it's Jesus in a pre-incarnate form, and, and uh, um, you know, even though it doesn't say Jesus, but that's just the, it's it's God, right? <laughs> so, so on his way on his way home to, to his, his true home, he, he's wrestling with God, and uh, and they're wrestling at night. <laughs> and when I read this scripture in the beginning, how what how old did you picture Jacob? Fifteen. 15? 15. 21. 21, like a young buck, you know, nice, smooth, shaved chest, because he lived among the tents, right? Strong legs, wrestling with God. You know, I'm no mathematician. It's just public school math. But 76 plus 21, this guy is 97 years old. No wonder his hip went out of socket. It wasn't God's fault. He was just old, right? <laughs> Ninety-seven years before he found himself. Okay. Well, Going through life, he's been through some stuff, he's seen some stuff, he's finally come to a place where he's starting to realize that even though he knows God, he didn't know himself. And he's never blessed by God because he didn't know who he was in God. Ninety-seven years. So he, he, he starts wrestling with God. <laughs> All his life he's been grabbing onto stuff and, and now something starts to grab a hold of him. Right? And that's, that's what grace is in our life. When you're going through life and you're starting to get ahead, you're trying to grab a hold of all this stuff, when something, grace gets a hold of you, and it starts to change you, and it's, you know, that's what grace is. That's what's happened to Jacob. Grace has now got a hold of him. It's not that Jacob is no longer grabbing, the grace is grabbing him. And he starts wrestling with God in the middle of the night, right? God, that's <laughs> now the key to this whole thing, I know, I know we're all over the place, but it, it was, it's going to tie together. <laughs> you got to help me preach this last part because it's good. And I'm closing, kind of. <laughs> okay. In Genesis, Genesis 32, verse 26, it says, The man said, Let me go, for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go. I will not let you. Sometimes you have to come to a place in your life where you say, I will not let you go. No matter how easy it is to let go of God and say, I'm not, you know, I can't handle it no more. My, my hip's hurting. I can't handle it.
smell of pain, I'm going to let you go. Jacob said, I will not let you go. Even though you may not be winning in life, even though you know, the, other, the situation may be overpowering you, sometimes you have to say, I will not let go because this stuff is important, it matters, and it has eternal, eternal purpose in my life. I will not let you go. Jacob said, I will not let you go. Amen. Okay. This, and that's not even the best part. <laughs> Notice Jacob says, I will not let you go unless you bless me. I will not let you go unless you bless me. <laughs> you have to hold on to Christ. You have to hold on to God and say, God, I will not let you go. Just like Job, when he's going through all the stuff that he's going through in his life, he's told God, he said, I will not let you go. No matter the, what happens to me, no matter if my friends leave me, no matter if my wife leaves, I will not let you go. I will not let Christ go. You have to hold on to Jesus through everything. Because only when you hold on to Christ can you find yourself in Christ. You have to say, I will not let you go. I will not let you go until you bless me. I think it's safe to say that you found yourself when you hold on to God when it's easier to let go. When you hold on to God when you're hurting in your head. When you hold on to God when you can't see Him clearly. Because they're wrestling. He doesn't even know who He's wrestling, right? He's holding on to God in the middle. He can't see what's going on, but He says, I will not let you go until you bless me. I don't understand what's going on. I can't see the end. I don't know. But I will not let you go. Amen. Can, can you just hear Jacob's stubbornness? His tenacity? Right? In his voice. I will not let you go. That same tenacity that made him a schemer, a con man, a swindler, a hustler, someone who's always trying to get ahead in life, now it's working for his benefit. Why? Because now he's got it directed in the right direction. He says, you know, <laughs> I've went through my whole life grabbing and, and conning, but now I found something that's worthwhile and I will not let you go. See, he's been holding on to heels his whole life to be blessed. But now he's holding on to Jesus. He's letting go of Esau's heel. He's letting go of the world. He's letting go of all the, all the stuff that you ever want. And he's holding on to Christ. And he's holding on to Jesus that I will not let you go. I came out holding Esau's heel, but now I'm holding on to the cross of Christ. I will not let you go. In verse 28, oh, excuse me. This, this is where it starts getting a little bit weird. In verse 27. He says, the man says, what is your name? So they've been wrestling all this. Now the sun's coming up. Now you want to know my name? And you've been wrestling all night. Now you want to know who I am? He says, I'm Jacob. I'm Jacob. Supplanter, heel grabber. 
exposes himself, showing God who he really is. I'm Jacob. But now, when Jacob comes to this point in his life, and he, and he, and he just lays it out before God, he says, I'm Jacob. That's when God blesses him. That's when God says, oh, now you're ready for the blessing that I have for you. Now I will bless you. In verse 28, he says, <laughs> verse 28, he says, your name will no longer be Jacob. From now on, your name will be Israel. That's so awesome. Aren't you glad that God gives us a new name? That He doesn't call us Jacob anymore? That He doesn't call us who we used to be? He doesn't call us who we pretend to be? He's not concerned about our past. He's not concerned about what we've done. But He says, I got a new name for you. Your name is Israel. No longer Jacob, but Israel. Jacob, self-planner, a uh, deceiver, a uh, 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 heel grabber. Do you know what Israel means? It means triumphant with God.
notes on one item and then just pull them up on the other and they're all in the folders that I placed them in and I don't have to you know, transfer them back and forth, it just does it automatically between all my devices and uh, it's awesome. Like if I'm, in, if I'm going to Walmart and kids is like, well, I need a shopping list, so she'll type it in Evernote and then she'll send it, she'll sync it up and it'll, it'll come right to my phone so I can just go through the list. And, uh, because when I go shopping, if I don't have a list, we're just getting hot dogs and corn dogs and pizza, right? And, uh, but every now and then, if there's no internet connection, there's this little phrase that comes up over your folders, and it says conflicting connection. So this is this is what happens. It, it, it happens here at the church because we don't have internet here, and I'll make some changes at home. And it won't sync here at the church. And I'm like, I made those changes, and then I'll get this this, this conflicting connection, and, and, and then I start getting real Jacob, right? <laughs> start getting all upset. And it's like I know I did that, and, and uh, sometimes we go through life like that. God has made the changes in us, but if we're not connected, those changes can't upload. And Jesus. This is, this, is, this is awesome. So they got done wrestling, and Jacob asked the angel, asked the man, asked God. He says, what's your name? You know who I am, but who are you? But the angel didn't, didn't tell him who he was. Why? Because God wasn't there to show Jacob who he was. He was there to show Jacob who he was. Not who God was. He lived 97 years and never met himself. And many years after Jacob died, now we'll close with this, I promise. You're supposed to say, oh, Pastor, we want to hear it all. <laughs> many years after Jacob died, his descendants are now enslaved in Egypt. And God appeared to Moses. And then, um, this, this passage is bless you because this is when I was going through this I mean it was snot bubbles and crocodile tears for hours actually we're going to do it just like Moses Moses goes to God God tells Moses take off them shoes boy and your socks why? because it's holy ground <laughs> and Moses asked God the same question that Jacob did in Exodus 13, or 313, Moses said to God, Suppose I go to Israel, to the Israelites, and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I tell them? Verse 14 says, God said to Moses, I am who I am. And this is what you're to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. Now I've preached that uh, many times and, and we've done it here. But I've never gone to the next verse. And we're going to do that right now. Verse 15. God also said to Moses. Say this to the Israelites. When they start questioning you about me, tell them this. The Lord, of, the, the Lord your God of your fathers, of Abraham, the God of Isaac, they expect them to say the God of Israel. Because if your God, because Israel is the good side of Jacob, and if your God, don't you want to be known as the good side? Don't you want to be known as the one, the God of the man who is changing the wrestling match, the one of the, of the good side? If that's how you want to be known, that's what I would do if I was God, right? I want to be the God of Israel. But he says, I'm the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. I'm the God of Jacob. I'm the God of your lonely places. I'm not only the God of 